a very good morning. You are more than welcome to another episode. I think this is episode 53 of the Coffee at 11 show. And uh, you are more than welcome into our little cafe. Thank you for joining us. In particular, I would like to welcome my special guest who zoomed all the way in from Thrun in uh, Scotland this morning to say hello. And it's coming to you courtesy of wigwam.ie SME peer support. Mr. Donnick O'Brien, please say hello and show us your coffee mug. Hello, Colm, and hello to all the guests in Ireland and all over the world. Oh, I love that. I love that. Add that in at the end. Yes, world domination. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Listen, it's great to have you here. Really, it's great to have you here. And when I met Dunnock recently, uh, he, he introduced himself as an Irish soul in Scotland. I just thought it was a lovely, a lovely phrase. So uh, we got to chat, really liked uh, what's going on with him and uh, invited him to come in and share with us what life is like for an Irish man. Uh, in Scotland. So let me just tell you a little bit about Donnick. We'll bring the man himself in then. So uh, as he says himself, an Irish man anchored in Scotland. By the way, he's the only guest on the show who's filled out the little bio sheet that I ask guests to fill out. He's done so in, in green, with green font. Well done you, Bula Bus. And <laughs> I love the Aer Lingus rig out, by the way. It's, it's uh, very <laughs> fetching. Right. Uh, his business name is Aspen People, A-S-P-E-N, Aspen People. And uh, what does your business do? It makes great connections to recruit great people in, into leadership positions. Love that. Uh, established nine years ago, 13 employees. And he goes on to say, Aspen People and Dunnock O'Brien are very much the same thing. Purpose-driven, family values, and underpin underpinned by being Irish. Aspen is based in Glasgow and has become a go-to in executive search in Scotland has prevailed through post-banking austerity. Sometimes Aspen competes in the, in the industry as the underdog, which being Irish can help overcome the odds. Happy days, I think we'd all agree with you on that. And uh, he said COVID-19 has given him, same as the rest of us, I think, time to reflect and think outside the box. And in fact, it was that and his searching online that uh, led him to the Coffee to Eleven show. And you've been very welcome. Uh, indeed, Dunnock. And then a couple of things that people wouldn't know about him necessarily. First of all, he's the nephew of Brendan O'Brien, lead singer of the Dixies. Now, if you recognize that name, you're going to show your age. So I've chosen to. Uh, <laughs> cho I'm, ple I'm pleading the fifth. I'm pleading the fifth in that one. Right? And uh, the Dixies, at one time, one of Cork's greatest exports. And uh, he, says, he says, we have a few other rogues in the family who shall remain nameless. We go with that one. And then the other thing he says, uh, he has an informal ICE club, I-C-E, and that stands for Irish Chief Executives, or aspiring leaders who he's connected with internationally, and he's responsible for appointing some of them into leadership jobs, uh, and it'd be great to do the same in Ireland someday. But you know what? Aspen, Ireland may well be an outflowing from uh, this morning's chat. Donald, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. And by the way, I'm putting it out here on record, the man owes me a pint of Guinness. That's right. That's right. Dunnock O'Brien, pleasure having you in the cafe. Thank you for joining us. In your own words, please, will you bring us back to those early years and how come you're an Irishman anchored in Scotland, please? Thanks a million, Colm. Thank you very much. And also, yeah, uh, it's all meant to be. How did I end up on this show, The O'Briens Meet? Um, well, it was meant to be because back in the 60s, two O'Briens met on both sides of my family. So uh, my, uh, my, my personality, my unusual personality is because I'm a double O'Brien. So two O'Briens met uh, in the 60s and then did the usual thing is uh, go to England or to London for a couple of years. Oh, and uh, oh, by the way, we'll give them all Irish names. So you go from Donnock, Connor, Orla and Liam, uh, all, uh, all, all internationally recognizable names. But when I Google myself these days, I get the guy from uh, Thomond who's uh, either 300 years ago or, or myself or one or two others. So uh, it's a good name to have because it's, uh, it's memorable, uh, except when I'm amongst Irish, because at least you can pronounce it correctly. So I put a lot of emphasis on family values because uh, uh, I uh, grew up in a great typical Irish family, really rooted, every ancestor's Irish, everything's Irish, but uh, I was at school in England, so my accent didn't come with it. But we were always going to go back. Uh, but um, uh, unfortunately, when my mum died, you know, the one thing we found in her will, which was a year after we, we buried her in Cork, was I wish to be buried in Ireland. Now, that's uh, quite pivotal because, we, you know, we, we debated about that because my dad uh, started pulling teeth uh, from uh, when he qualified at UCC. Uh, for You know, he kept doing that in London and he did it nonstop for 50 years until they had to pull him out of the surgery. 
uh, and uh, when when mum died, he said, "Ooh, I don't know whether I'd like her to be uh, around here or uh, or back in Ireland." And so we decided that was the case. So we grew up as a really really strong family. In fact, um, all our in our younger years, we went back to Ireland the whole time. Every every holiday was in Ireland. So it's Neuros uh, cross over to Cork, uh, and all the relatives that are there plus uh, Kerry. So that was a great great time. Uh, but of course I went to school in London. But by the time I became a sort of a teenager, I was starting to become a little bit frustrated with that kind of combination. So holidays uh, started going abroad in the late 80s. So my experience of Ireland was all 70s and early 80s. So I never really got to feel the Celtic Tiger apart from um, some of my uh, you know, relatives that stayed in Ireland. But a lot of them moved. Uh, to Canada was a popular place for relatives to go to. So there's a big Irish mafia in Toronto, and some of them spread across to Vancouver, some uh, in Australia, uh, and some in a Nova Scotia. So how did I end up in Scotland? That I'm still not quite sure about, because I'm wondering uh, if you look back the family tree, if I could find any of the records uh, uh, that um, maybe there's a link to Scotland. So I... Uh, got to the age of university, came out of university and uh, ended up uh, uh, falling into accountancy and realized I didn't have the personality for that either. But uh, after five years of um, punching numbers, uh, someone said, why don't you uh, sell accountants? I said, well, I'd never really thought of that and I didn't really see that as a valid career after university and, and uh, the accountancy qualification training that goes with it. Uh, but um, it, it, it was a people industry where uh, you need to add a professional service uh, that um, comes with that kind of logical training in accountancy business with, with people. And people are the greatest assets. And some of your great speakers are all about people. And uh, uh, one day later on, and I'm bumping around the years, I didn't intend to do that. But later on, when we set this company up, uh, and the brand people came up with the name Aspen, which was really, really good because it stunned a lot of people into silence uh, from where we were. Uh, and they said, but what will it do? What do you do? And we just said, great people, great partners. That's our, our strap line, great people. So going back to um, uh, moving from the accountancy into the recruitment industry, uh, I obviously uh, at that point started getting frustrated with London. You know, I thought, um, I need to get out of here. Uh, and uh, I had an opportunity at one point in uh, 97, I could have gone to Dublin and opened up a, a branch of our uh, uh, company, or I could have gone to Scotland. And I haven't got a clue why I went to Scotland, probably because I could just drive up one road and just go 400 miles and come straight back. And I'd also, I'd explored Ireland uh, and I knew Ireland well, but what I couldn't get was the kind of combination I've got now with the Kerry effect, and get, walk out of my door, pop on a train, and 30 minutes I'm in the city of Glasgow, and from there I can go anywhere. Uh, and in fact, I can almost swim to Ireland, as you know from Troon, it's you know, 20 miles across. So I wanted to be in Ireland, but I'm in Scotland. So that's why I'm anchored in Scotland, in lockdown, wearing you know, my green ink and so on. Thank you for that uh, lovely, lovely pot of history. I love you know, the, the opening part of the show because we get to know the person in the chair. And uh, that, you know, that's been a lovely description, you know, double O'Brien, love that, by the way, double <laughs> O'Brien. And uh, so your, par your parents met, and, you know, the ovarian lottery, we talk about it a lot on the show. Love the fact that your parents insisted on Irish names, very difficult for English to, uh, people typically to, to pronounce, um, but it, it sets you apart. Um, you were very honest those early years that you had your grounding back in Ireland in the summers in the 70s and early 80s, but thereafter which is, happens for all young people. They begin to lose the luster for, you know, hankering back to the, the old sod or whatever, uh, nostalgia. So the, the holidays went abroad. And then I loved, uh, and I know you did jump forward to it, but um, I, I think it's probably appropriate to not lose the moment. You said the name Aspen was chosen and it sort of stunned people into silence. And I know when, I, when the word Aspen is used, I think of um, John Denver, to be honest, right? That's where my head goes. And... Uh, Aspen, Colorado. Curious about the name uh, Aspen, and uh, I wouldn't mind if we touch on it for a second um, without losing the flow. But uh, the other part you said, and I'm a huge believer in strap lines, you said it's about great people. 
uh, great partnership. Is that, is that the strap line or did I pick that up yeah. wrong? You got it right. You got it right. I was really humbled by Jerry's uh, story yesterday. I really related to it. Uh, and uh, I think things happen for a reason. But um, so in, in 97, it was go left to Dublin or go straight up to Glasgow. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, you'll see a theme emerging. So uh, I'm in Troon. I've got about 40 golf courses near me. Uh, and uh, I, can, um, I can swim to Ireland if I need to, or I can, uh, I can go up to Glasgow uh, and I'm on the beach but I can get to a city where the jobs are. So that's, that's, that's what happened. Um, so in 2001, 9-11 happened, uh, but I was commuting back. I, I came to Troon, I, I was here, but I hadn't settled. I hadn't bought a house. And so I, was, I got a job pro, uh, promotion uh, up in, uh, uh, in London again. So I went back and I lived in, at home but I was part-time at home and coming back up from my relationship here in Scotland. So I was commuting, uh, driving the 400 miles, which was handy because you can pick up uh, the keys and just drive when you want without, you know, what you have to do with the plane. But 9-11 was pivotal because it was life-changing for everybody in the world. And it also meant that life was short, et cetera. So I maneuvered myself back up to Scotland. My parents made a mistake because there's a photo here on the wall of... Um, the uh, postage stamp, and for the golfers uh, in the world, they'll understand it's one of the most famous golf holes in uh, Scotland. It's also got one of the most inspiring views of, uh, of the uh, mountains of Arran, uh, and it feels ex exceptionally Irish. It feels brilliant, and it feels great to be able to walk there. Uh, and so they had, so every time I went to bed, there was that, that was the last thing I would see. That would be the last thing I would see. And so I was destined to go back and my mum was a bit, well, you know, why don't you live here and, you know, got there on holiday. So I came up um, and then uh, the family started. So in 2005, that's when I found things happened. My first son was born and my um, uh, job clicked. I found someone that I met. I met a guy who was doing the job that I thought I was growing out of. So I thought I was growing out of the uh, world of recruitment because it was transactional and it was really, it, it, it didn't have depth of relationships and it was transaction, transaction. Uh, but I met a guy who uh, our values clicked like that. We were both escaped accountants. I was Irish. He wanted to be Irish. Uh, have you ever met a lot of people that aspire to be Irish? Because that's the kind of people that we keep the company of over here. Um, and... Uh, his values and my values were very, very aligned. Uh, and it happened to be that we, uh, we, uh, we worked in the world of recruitment. And then, so I worked in a, a brand new sector I'd never worked in before. And all my relationships developed from 2005. Son was born, followed by my daughter a few years later. Uh, and so everything felt really, really balanced. Um, we were challenged economically by, uh, as everyone else was, uh, in 2008, nine. And it was like a tsunami. It started in other parts of the world and rolled up to Scotland uh, a kind of a year or two later. So we had the opportunity to, to spin out of the previous company because within that company, there were relationship-led uh, people and there were um, profit-led people. So profit came first for some people and relationships came first for other people. And the relationship was where I was at, but me and my uh, guy that we got on well with were escaped accountants, so we knew how to make the books uh, work if we could be humble and cut cloth to measure and so on. So relationships came first, and that was all really, really good, but uh, we had to spin out and we had to say goodbye to a brand that he, he started it up before he met me because uh, he was 13 years older than me, um, and then uh, we had to say goodbye to that brand because he sold it off to his, uh, his colleague, uh, and uh, someone else joined us, another Irish lady from Tullamore, uh, I sold the dream of how good it was going to be because we were expanding. Um, and uh, so she joined the team and then there was uh, two Irish and uh, one wannabe. So then we had lots to say and the brand people said, what's, you know, what, what's this all about? And we talk, 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 talk. And then they came back with Aspen. Now the previous company was called Monroe, which is a Scottish term for a, a basically a hill, the Monroes. So that would be like, uh, um, Ben Nevis, uh, it would probably be famous to a lot of people. Uh, and uh, Aspen was much more clear, much more Denver, Colorado, much more ski slopes, much more sunshine, much more, uh, I guess, green. 
and there's the theme. So it really sat well with, the, with us around that table and stunned us into silence. But the great people, great partners, that's what we do. It's lovely, 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 lovely. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, I'm delighted you, you, I sort of threw you off. My apologies uh, because the accent just grabbed me, but I'm delighted that you brought it all the way back, back around and you said, it, you know, it's, it's very Aspen, Colorado. It's very ski slope. It's, uh, it's just mm -hmm. a description. Uh, and as you said, stunned people into silence and then great people, great partnerships, uh, sorry, great people, great partners. And um, the other thing that struck me, because I'm a huge fan of strap lines, I think it's really important that somebody has uh, a strap line associated with their business. And I think yours is one of the better ones. Delighted to say the Coffee at 11 uh, show has become people worth meeting. And Donald O'Brien, you fit the category beautifully. A person worth meeting, an Irish soul anchored in Scotland. Lovely to have you here. You get the bullet bus. There, all over. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Kathy, are you in the US today? Yeah, great stuff. Lovely. You're, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. So, folks, uh, listen, this is, this is lovely stuff. This is just a gorgeous story. Thanks for that. A couple of things I want to touch on, if I may, uh, Dunnock. Um, you said, somebody said to you years ago, you should sell accountants. I well, thought that was a fascinating phrase. So, you were an accountant, and they realized that you were much more than an accountant. I love the fact that you refer to yourself as an escaped accountant. Uh, but you realize you're much more than an accountant. Relationships clearly matter to you. And the fact that somebody suggested you could tie what you know and your industry into your relationship bias by selling accountants, I think that's a really nice idea. But then you went on to say that, uh, you know, the earlier company became very transactional. There was no relationship. It was, you know, bring Johnny in, sell Johnny on, dare I say it. Uh, and the, and the, the divide came uh, when you realized uh, the spin-off or the spin-out came when you realized you needed to stick with transactional. I'm very impressed, dare I say it, that uh, your colleague chose to join you, given that he had been the originator in the other organizations. So that's, that speaks volumes to me. So you end up um, with Aspen and its relationship led. And I think Jerry was saying this yesterday, uh, you know, um, care about the people before you care about the sale. And it would appear that that's what Aspen stands for. Is that fair to say? It is fair to say. Thank you very much. There are challenges, though, and we're trying to overcome them because uh, uh, the uh, austerity measures brought on by a post-banking crisis meant that um, there are obstacles uh, getting in our way, and I'm trying to overcome them. And COVID just brought them all to, to the fore. So I, I haven't come to the conclusion yet, and I find um, that I'm searching. I don't know whether it's like uh, I'm searching for something. I don't, I don't know what the question is, but I'm searching for an answer to a question I haven't even written yet. Uh, and I just guess that's partly down to my personality because I've lived with myself and I think I'm normal. But when I come out into Irish people, they get me. But when I'm in this country, they don't always get it. They think I'm maybe a, a maverick or a slightly different in my thinking. But I think I've always thought this way. So... Um, I find that the Coffee at 11 show is putting me in really good pump company and it's definitely worth people, uh, people worth meeting because it's um, making me remember who I am. Well, thank you for saying that. I'm delighted. I'm very privileged. This was just an idea 10, 11 weeks ago and it's become something and it's become a go-to place for myself and Shelley and the team and Bridget and Katrina and everybody and Sarah who couldn't be with us this morning. It's great. I, 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 I stopped mentioning names because I, I miss somebody. But look, uh, it really is wonderful um, and we're very blessed to be able to do it in these strange times. I think what it has allowed us to, even the fact that you and I are conversing here in this virtual cafe environment, I think COVID has uh, gifted us this opportunity to embrace this type of technology. Prior to this, I, I would never have considered, let's do something like this, but it was the most obvious thing to do because of COVID. So I think COVID is gonna shape the world uh, significantly going forward. And I'm curious about your views on that. Before we, before we go there, uh, Donna, can you, and, and, and thank you for being honest enough to say you're searching for an answer to a question you haven't even written yet. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know that I get it, but I'm attempting to get it. You're, you're searching. And if you keep searching, you will find. Keep knocking on the door shall be opened. It'll happen for you. So best wishes with that. So Aspen, right up to when COVID hit. So you said there were some challenges post-austerity. I presume you were coming out of that and then COVID struck. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. So obviously 13 years have moved on since uh, uh, my colleague and I um, met uh, that famous cup of coffee that went on for uh, three hours. Uh, and uh, 
we are 13 years down, so we're all 13 years older. So we've 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 tried to reincarnate the company. We've tried to uh, freshen up the leadership team. And uh, what has happened is some of the uh, clients that we have been doing business with have put walls in, in, in the relationship. Like, so we've got to do a lot of procurements and tenders and things like that. So that's just a, a technical uh, bit of um, time consumption, which is in, which is kind of like a big wall that you have to climb over to get the relationship on the other, on the other side. So that's what I'm navigating. And COVID has given me a chance to kind of concentrate on the world as opposed to the, the tender you know they're still coming in it's all coming in uh, electronically but um it's given me a chance to think about who i'm working with the great people i work with but the great people who are my clients are set, are also great uh, candidates as well so i get given an opportunity i have to pitch to pr to prove i can do the job i've done for the last 30 years so that's what the tender is to answer that question uh, better than the competition and then you then go out and search you go to search for somebody that will be right for this position over here a leadership position it's usually kind of at the top end of risk between the chief and the and the governance of uh, of an organization uh, and all of our clients are cause driven so from universities and colleges to the nhs to uh, charities uh to some sport charities etc so it's uh, the the theme of our client base are cause driven so we're trying to find great people to put in great organizations to help them prosper and survive. It's not always about profit and shareholder interest. It's usually about stakeholder interests. And that's quite a, you know, that's understanding the stakeholders. So the, there's, there's so many tangents you're spinning the whole time, but the, the fundamental uh, is great people. Uh, and uh, that's why, you know, I've been very, very successful in bringing some great Irish people into Scotland. There seems to be an affinity uh, there. Uh, I would love to bring it the other way. I did uh, some work at, at Ulster for a while, so that was really refreshing to come across. And it was it was O'Brien and Kelly from Aspen pressing the buzzer, and they said, O'Brien and Kelly, come in. And they said, oh, on you come, because we weren't people coming in from London. Uh, O'Brien and Kelly came in. It was quite good fun pressing the button there and turning up with the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, accents that were <laughs> that came with it. I love it. I love it. That's 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 wonderful, uh, and and do you know what? It does open doors. Let's let's be honest. Uh, when I met Donut first, when we were chatting about him coming on the show, he said we we place great people in leadership positions. Lots of Irish, lots of Scottish, and even some English. What was <laughs> a very telling phrase in the nicest possible way that perhaps only us Irish would get. Uh, look, it's it's wonderful, um, wonderful uh, story, and and very honest. Uh, I I wondered in it. Who is your client? Is your client the person who's looking to hire or is your client somebody on your books who is looking to be hired? It's both. It's, it's, it's both because uh, if you're looking for a chief executive or a, or a director of the, of the business, you're looking for a great person. So we go out and find m as many great people as we can that compete. So actually, by default, we're both the poacher and the gamekeeper. So I don't look onto my books, my, my green book, because some people have a, gray, a black book. But I pull out my green book and I look for names. But I also look around the world. I go onto the internet. I go onto LinkedIn. I bump into Colm O'Brien and it takes me into a corner. And I cut, bump into different people around the world. Uh, and that's, that's great because it means you're making a promise and then you need to live up to it because you've made that promise. And also, if you want to go the extra mile or two, then, uh, then you know, you're going to bring a great supply of people. So those people, the winner is, is all very well, because that's where the, where the outcome is. It's the competitors. It's the losers. It's the underdogs. It's those people that I put uh, just as much focus on. And that's why we're different to people who are just focusing on the, on the, on the fast buck. For us, it's all of the competitors need uh, a return on their time investment which is a relationship return on their time invested. So we meet great people and some days they come back to me a year later and say, hang on, uh, my uh, service in, my, in losing that competition was better than my service in winning another competition. So can you, can you go and find me a great person and do it with great partnership? Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Uh, and by the way, you mentioned green books and all sorts of colored books. You showed us a book just before the, uh, the show there. Do you have a book off to your right beside your coffee cup? Yes, I, I don't know why they didn't print them in green. <laughs> look at that, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have a British passport, so I'm, uh, I'm okay with Brexit, but, uh, you know, so my families have got the green card. In fact, I'm, 
I, it's a win-win when Scotland and rugby, uh, Scotland and Ireland play in rugby because you know they both. You know, I'm always going to win. Um, so uh, as long as Ireland win, but they usually do. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's very obvious, don't it, that you're a people person. And uh, I can, you know, and we, we had uh, Jennifer Haskins on the show earlier in the week, and Jennifer's a matchmaker, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I think you're probably the same. You're probably a matchmaker for uh, accountants and whatnot and matching great people into great leadership positions. And to do that, you must get into a corner in a hotel somewhere and have the conversation or in this new world on Zoom and get to know somebody a little. Uh, so able to make those recommendations yeah hats off to you really good yeah i never was a coffee drinker but that's what i had to do when i took up this industry but you i do what? have that there is a pint of guinness with your name on it over there and, and that will be claimed that will be claimed <laughs> uh, it's great it's it's, it's fabulous uh, to have the chat so you brought us through the journey great journey may i ask yourself and uh, mr kelly presumably it was mr kelly who started monroe is that right no it uh, it wasn't it was uh, he was mr dalglish kenny dalglish was his name you know he used to play football but um but uh, yeah he that was the guy uh, that i started with um but the guy who came on that journey to uh, ulster university was called liam kelly now liam kelly i mean how scottish can you get <laughs> I love it. So Kenny Dalglish, the Kelly Kenny Dalglish, was no, your no, it's the same, it's the same <laughs> name, but uh, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he he didn't he didn't get into the football team. It was probably his dad or something. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Had to ask that question. I couldn't let that one slide. Um, so, uh, are you still partners today? Yeah, we are. We're just uh, he's just uh, doing uh, less of it actively. We uh, we we catch up at the board meetings and have. Uh, coffee um, or virtual coffees every now and again. Fabulous. Well, tell him, tell him that uh, we're very grateful that uh, he joined you in the partnership in Aspen and we wish you continued success. And then you've been hiring uh, Irish people into leadership positions. This, uh, you, this lady from Tullamore, and do I, is there another one there? Oh, yeah, there's plenty. I mean, uh, the Irish lady from Tullamore has, uh, has joined the Aspen team, so she's a co-director a co with me and, and has been... Uh, working with me for uh, for the last ten years uh, and uh, sitting around that leadership table, but she she was never into this industry before. We had a cup of coffee at I think it was at eleven o'clock one day in Troon years ago, and I said, "Look, you know, you might want to think about this." And uh, well, she's still thinking about it with me, um, which is good fun. But a lot, a lot a lot of people leading big institutions far better than me are 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 have come over from Dublin and uh, and on all over. So I've got you know a lot of university leaders in Scotland are Irish. A lot of college leaders. A guy a guy from Portrush. I I guess I, guess I don't want to mention names in case, but um, there was a guy from Portrush who uh, who rang up to say I'm not I'm not sure about this job in Glasgow. And I was like a shepherd because I had 70 other people ready to compete, all of which were equally good. But he wanted to escape. He thought, I'm not sure if you if you want me enough or whether it's right for me because it's great here in Port. So I said, look, a little bit like what he said, I said, there's a pint of Guinness with your name on it <laughs> if you come across. And he, he loved sailing. So he, he once sailed from Port Rush to, to Troon for lunch and back. Uh, and um, I said, look, there's this uh, college in Glasgow. And I think they're talking about making a super college. So he came across having a seed, that seed of uh, a dream planted. And now he's 11 years in that job. Still going back to Port Rush. He's got family up there. He goes back there on a very regular basis. Uh, uh, but um, he is leading the biggest uh, college in Scotland now, uh, having had a chance to leave. And I could have, if I was lazy, I could have said, well, look, I've got 70 other competitors you know, on you go. But no, I uh, I challenged him to come back and have a pint of Guinness. And now he's leading that big college. That's one example. Well done. Lovely story. Lovely story. I'm now nervous about my pint of Guinness in Troon, to be honest. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, lads, if everyone missing, you know where to find me. I'll be in Troon. Listen, uh, great, great story. Lovely story. Uh, for what it's worth, University of Limerick, uh, the president has just resigned very recently. Uh, just putting that out there in case Aspen people uh, have uh, people in their books or on their books that uh, might be might have an interest. Um, that one's for free. Okay. Uh, the other one is I uh, love the fact that you had the cup of coffee with the lady from Tullamore uh, 
13 years ago and she's still around. Uh, I've often been accused, uh, people that I've had cups of coffee with that are hanging around for years have right. often told other people, don't have a cup of coffee with Colin O'Brien. Whatever you do, do not have the cup of coffee because that way you can escape. Because once you have the cup of coffee, I think you're a bit the same, Donnock. Maybe it's an O'Brien thing. Maybe that's the, Maybe that's it. No I think it is. I think it is because she's trying to keep me straight. She translates because she can take my Irishness and say to the Scottish people, that's what he means. So she's my translator. Fabulous, fabulous. Right, listen, uh, we have a lovely picture where you have been. Has, has COVID hit badly? What's different in COVID? It's got its ups and downs like everybody else. Uh, uh, we, uh, we've put a lot of other company in furlough, so there's a lot of other great people that are sitting there, kind of like caged tigers that we want to get out and, uh, and do work with. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously the upside is joining meetings around the world like this uh, and learning, you know, getting, you know, I think self-development uh, and, uh, you know, uh, focusing on being better. For me, that has been therapeutic. Um, I think in terms of Aspen going forward in the future, we just need to uh, pivot uh, and make sure that we can do business with people who want to do business with us. And if, uh, if that can be around the world, that would be great. Uh, and, but obviously we need to stick to the knitting and, uh, uh, um, you know, get known uh, and you get known online as well. Yeah. And in, in truth with, with the brand Aspen, it's not quintessentially Scottish, shall we say. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it has a brand, uh, has brand, you know, equity, for want of a term. Uh, it, ha it has leverageability. So we wish you every success with that. And thanks for touching on uh, life post-COVID. Listen, re really lovely having you in the cafe this morning. And thanks for zooming in from Troon uh, to join us. Uh, it's been a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Donald O'Brien. Uh, not, not, letting you, not letting you go just now, Donald. We're about to go to Q&A from the floor. Um, but before we do, as I always do at this point of the show, I'm going to ask you, if I may, for one tip that you would give to your nearest and dearest. You get through COVID, come out the far side in best shape by doing blah. What's that one blah for Donald O'Brien, please? I've been thinking about that. I think it's treasure the stolen moments. So there are some phenomenal things that are happening, and sometimes you don't. it's a frustrating moment, and then you look back and think, they care you know so I, for me i've uh, i've had these frustrations with my kids or whatever it might be but i'm thinking hang on i'm seeing them i'm watching them go online i'm watching them uh, do their guitar lesson or in my son's case he's now learning the bagpipes those are stolen moments i wouldn't get to see them at school but i see them at school i can walk out of the room and watch them at school i can help them i can uh, go for a round of golf i could uh, you know i have a, a big heavy day sometimes and i come out and i take off my zoom suit and I'm straight on the bike, straight down the beach, whatever it might be. So it's quite hard to switch off because you're all on top of everything. Uh, but those are stolen moments. And I sometimes think when it gets a bit overwhelming, and I think, uh, Eamon, thanks for keeping us in the present. Keeping in the present is a tricky thing to do when you're always racing in your mind. Uh, so, you know, these are things, these are little snippets, and these stolen moments are here, here and here. Bring them together for me. Thinking about this question, obviously it's one you have to have an answer to. It's those stolen moments. Treasure them, pocket them. Oh, I love that. I love the way that finished. Those, sto those stolen moments, treasure them, pocket them. Beautiful, beautiful. Donnock, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to Q&A from the floor. Who would like to comment or ask Ian Hannan? Ian Hannan, thank you very much indeed. Ian. Good morning, all. Donna, great to meet you. Um, love your story, I have to say. So uh, I was I was spellbound for a while there. A um, couple of things that you you briefly touched on it, and the question I was going to ask, and, and you kind of touched on it uh, just a short while ago. The question was really, uh, I find myself starting a lot of questions with the words under normal circumstances. So I'll start this question with, with the same. But I, really thinking about your business and, and how you get yourself known or how you get your business known. So again, maybe we're in you know different times now and, and who knows what will happen. But again, under normal circumstances, how is it that if I'm your type of client or, or I'm either looking for a particular position or I'm looking for somebody, um, how is it that Aspen People is 
the guy, he, he, these are the guys that I need to contact. These are the guys that are going to sort me out. So how, how do you get yourself known out there? Have you a particular strategy or has it just kind of happened by accident over the years? Has it evolved? Um, yeah, just, just like to hear your thoughts about that. Thanks, Ian. I would say it's evolved because in, uh, when we started up, there was a lot of print advertising and our logo would be reassuringly understated understated being in the personality i suppose but yeah. uh, obviously as we've gone digital uh, you know we haven't yet got the most powerful digital strategy in fact i'm actually uh, taking tips from the coffee at 11 show because i was really impressed with the uh, the uh, you know pre uh, pre show uh, social media last night is it, it, quite impressive. Uh, so you can see I'm still thinking about that because I know the future will be to get your brand out there in a digital way to get to conversations like this quicker because we'll get there by hook or by crook, but you know, you might not get there in the volume required. So you got to get your brand out digitally. I know that, but I, you know, I'm still looking for an answer to that. But once we get there and have this type of conversation, I'll just have to I'll have to go into my humble past for people to have said to me that's great because every time I go into selling mode I'm like well what's unique what's different well I'm me and I, I presume everyone else would be doing the same but it turns out that not everyone else is the same yeah great yeah thanks for that Tony. Great stuff. Thank you, Ian Hannon, and great uh, welcome back to the cafe. We haven't seen you in a while. You've been flat out busy, which I'm delighted to hear. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. Well done. Uh, great stuff. Thank you, uh, Ian, and thank you, Dunnock. Uh, Princess Shelley, please, in your own time. Hey, Dunnock, thank you for your story. Um, really, really enjoying it. Um, a couple of comments in there in the, into the cafe chat. Um, Tim Kelly, he's, again, a regular in our cafe. We affectionately refer to him as our resident pup. And he likes your pot of coffee, so he loves the big pot you have there of um, that you might. Have. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he enjoyed that. Um, and then Kathy Mara, welcome Kathy again to the cafe. It's lovely to have you here today. I know Colm already welcomed you, and Kathy's joining us from New Hampshire, um, which looks like a beautiful, beautiful place. So we're delighted to have you here in the cafe. Eamon has popped up the links there, Donak, for um, your LinkedIn um, and the the website for Aspen people. So everybody in the cafe, you've access to that there, and um, you're welcome to connect and have a look at the web page there. Um, and Eamon also popped in some of my favourite nuggets today. Um, you see, what we have done is we have these lovely notebooks. This is like I, I, I consider it to be like um, our Anne Frank diaries. So like I'll have this forever, and there's so <laughs> many great bits and pieces in it that I can reflect back on and learning from. And um, Eamon has made notes here that the treasure the stolen moments, focus on being better um, and get your brand out digitally. So they resonated for Eamon today. Um, for myself, I loved the double O'Brien bit. Colm already mentioned that. I imagine your mother, when filling out forms, her married name O'Brien and maiden name O'Brien, I can imagine that kind of raised eyebrows. She may have had to clarify, um, <laughs> it, you know. And I, I love as well, Donak, the depth, the, the emphasis and value you put on the depth of relationships, you know. Um, as a business woman myself, and I'm very relationship-based myself, very relationship-focused. And in business, you can sometimes be, find yourself that you have to kind of justify that because we should be more maybe fact-based and profit-led, if you like. And I like the value that you put on being relationship-led, you know. And uh, just a slight twist on a statement I heard before, just slightly, slightly twisted. Um, you, you brought it back into my brain when you were talking about all the wonderful people and everything. And I thought, what you do and what so many of us do and aim for, and you're succeeding great, is wonderful work with wonderful people in a wonderful way will make a wonderful day. So it's slightly different than the one I'd heard before, but um, Bridget um, liked that one. Thank you for that, Bridget. So, um, so yes, that's um, all from me. And I'm going to only delight you just to thank you again, Dylan, for your great story and taking the time to join us. And you've now, uh, you've now contributed to um, this great content that's out there now in our lovely, lovely cafe. So thank you so much. And that takes it nicely. Then back over to you, Colin. Thank you. Lovely, Princess Shelley. I love, I love that part of the show. Uh, Eamon Smith uh, has a question he'd like to ask. I just realised you've trooned in this morning, not zoomed in, you've trooned in this morning. <laughs> Eamon Smith. 
Thanks, Colin. Uh, Donald, thank you so much for sharing uh, your story this morning. Brilliant. I'm scribbling away here. I, I had a couple of um, things. Uh, do you, know, you, you mentioned a couple of things there around, you know, like kind of ground where you go to ground yourself, let's say, and bringing yourself into the moment. And I'm, I'm delighted you enjoyed our little mindful moment this morning. Can I ask you then, kind of getting down to you, what does what does Donald O'Brien do to kind of ground yourself, to bring yourself into the here and now, to get into self development and getting the brand out and so on? What's your favorite, let's say, thing that you do to bring you here? If that makes sense. Play golf, yeah. um, and I used to be quite competitive because I thought that was the thing to do, especially with the family I was in. Uh, I'm Salim, Salim, but. The, well, I was talking about stolen moments, and I track back to moments in Kerry when I was handing a three iron down to get my guy, my uh, uncle, from down the depths of a, a bunker to pull him back up because they were uh, uh, playing 600 yards against the wind uh, um, and coming in uh, almost frostbitten and taking a t pint of Guinness for the, the, the blood to come back into your hands. Uh, and uh, now playing with my son. Uh, and there's three generations playing on the same fairway, hacking it into the bushes, it doesn't matter. That's a stolen moment. Uh, but golf's just about the right amount of time to defuse, because uh, I think the mindful one minute was fantastic, and that's kind of a voyage of discovery for me, because you can pull it together in, in, in time for an important pitch, and I don't know what happens to me mentally through the day, but sometimes... I get to a point and my brain's got 25 things going on, but it's like juggling one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, but you'd, I don't know. And then at the end of the day, I'm thinking if I do something mindful like that, then, uh, then it really, uh, it really uh, does send to you. So uh, I'm on a voyage of discovery there and I've really been Im impressed with the way you guys have been doing it. So, so I can see that that might be helpful. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. Great answer. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Um, a lovely question as ever, and thank you for asking it, and Dunnock, uh, thank you for going there. Uh, and this is the magic of the, this Coffee at Eleven show. It really is about real people coming in, and, the, and the, the facade comes off, right? And we just sit and have a cup of coffee, and we're getting to know each other, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. Each time it's one-on-one, -on -one, by the way. It's Shelley and you, or it's Eamon and you, or me and you, or Ian and you, or whomever, right? It's always one-on-one, -on -one, and the rest of us get to... Um, Earwig is my phrase, but uh, was one of the Shelley always uses. Anyway, come here, it's a pleasure, absolute pleasure. Thank you, Donnock, for taking the time and tr truning in. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. You probably know, we're probably related. <laughs> oh yeah, forgive me, thank you for reminding me. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. So, okay, Donnock O'Brien, D-O-N-O-G-H is the spelling, is the same spelling as the fourth Earl of Tolmont, right? And I'm zooming to you from uh, Killaloo here in County Clare. And about 300 metres that way is the site of Brian Baru's uh, palace. And uh, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, truthfully, it's the first time I've ever felt at home. So I think I've come back to, re to uh, mm -hmm. reclaim the crown. And uh, <laughs> uh, exciting time. You, you know, do you know, is there a link back to Donnock O'Brien, fourth Earl? Have you got a claim on where I'm living, for example? Absolutely. Uh... But, uh, you know, I never know which one's the fact or the fiction because I've grown up in an Irish family where, uh, you know, we're descended from royalty, you know, Brian Burrow, et cetera. So everyone in the UK knew that. So I, as I was growing up, it, it was the story that kept getting retold, retold. But I'm not always 100 percent sure because there's sometimes a three pints of Guinness uh, uh, involved, maybe turkey tree. <laughs> Who knows? But, uh, you know, in those days, there was quite a... Uh, uh, a fine line between uh, the uh, reality and possibly uh, the dream. I love it, I love it. And what did they say? Never let the facts get in the way of a good uh, story or the truth get in the way of a good story. Well, someone uh, someone came up with the idea to name me Donnock O'Brien. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, choices. <laughs> so someone came up with the idea. Now they missed it. Maybe they had good humor. It's, uh, it's great, it's great, um, and thank you for that. And by the way, the fourth Earl of uh, Tolmond, I learned, the uh, another Donnock O'Brien, uh, he is the reason why Clare was wrestled from the Kingdom of Connacht. You didn't know this. He was the, the reason why the County Clare was wrestled from the Kingdom of Connacht back into Munster. Uh, so there you go, something you didn't know. You always learn something you never knew. Well, uh, just a quick fact is, uh, if I go to an event, a black tie event, I have to wear a kilt. 
I don't have to. But in Scotland, your surname is linked to uh, what the tartan is. And when uh, I came to Scotland, I thought, well, I, I need a Celtic connection here. To, uh, so I, I looked back and I thought, what's the relevant name? Uh, what's the uh, tartan? And there was a, there's a Munster tartan. So in Ireland, the provinces of Ireland have a kilt. So I can wear that kilt now with pride because it's authentic. I didn't want to just wear an old kilt. And uh, you know, I don't blame you, but it's great, a monster kilt. Lads, lads, watch this space. <laughs> uh, very exciting. Donald, a real pleasure, real pleasure. Thank you for uh, coming into us in the cafe today. Uh, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you one more time. Let me tell you, before we close up for the day, let me tell you what's happening on the Coffee at 11 show tomorrow. And this is going to get very exciting tomorrow. There's a young man going to zoom into the cafe tomorrow. His name is Pat Falvey. Pat Falvey of patfalvey.com. And this guy is a legend. And uh, yesterday was his birthday, by the way. Uh, I'll let him share tomorrow his age. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, he's zooming into the cafe tomorrow. Fascinating story. Fascinating story of huge wins, huge losses, very challenging times and then mountaineering and adventuring like you've never heard. You need to come in tomorrow and meet Pat Falvey. It's going to be absolutely roller coaster of a show tomorrow. So on that note, let me just thank uh, the team. Let me thank uh, Princess Shelley for producing today's show, Eamon Smith for uh, keeping us safe and warm, uh, for Katrina O'Brien in advance for making this beautiful uh, later on this evening for, for sharing social media, uh, to wigwam.ie SME peer support for their ongoing support, to Donna O'Brien for being uh, my special guest today. And I'll finish by saying, as I always do, Donna O'Brien, namaste. Great. Thank you.